Here we go. <clears throat> well, welcome to the first uh, try on, on the DEFCON Next Generation uh, with a, a, a bit of a, a different schedule and, and appointment finding uh, process. Uh, I see we have we have one or two. Do we have two seat note operators here? No, I don't think so. Well, I'm. Uh, yeah, so I'm running one of the seat notes now. I uh, just took it over from Devin a few hours ago. Okay, and there is someone else. Okay, just joined in via the. Uh, no, uh, there uh, from the current seat note operators. There's nobody here in, uh, besides with. Uh, Okay, that doesn't matter. Let's try it, and and we will see if we if we keep this uh, format of scheduling a dev course. Uh, first, first point of the agenda is is uh, well, uh, we we had the feeling that um, people are a bit lost if they join the project now, because there is. Uh, not much response on Slack. There is not much response uh, on GitHub issues and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk about why that is, and and uh, how it may uh, change in the in the near future. Uh, first of all, for the for the merging process and so on, we have three developers uh, total. That allow to merge uh, things into the the main uh, uh, branch. Uh, one is Christoph. Christoph is on vacation. The other one is SQ, and as far as we know, SQ is moving house or something like this. Just uh, uh, at the moment. Sorry, uh, maybe, yes. maybe you uh, add the surname because we have now two Christoph. Is Christoph Sturm? So that's not confusing. Okay, uh, uh, it's, it's Christoph Sturm wanted to join, and maybe I invite him quickly on on Slack. Maybe he, he lost the time. I think he was expected to come as well. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, sorry. I, I think he, he said he said he can't make it. Uh, no, that was Devin. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, so we, we are three, three people that are uh, able to merge something and the only one active uh, uh, as, as of now is, is me. So there is quite a, a, a huge workload on me and uh, progress is slow. Uh, Manfred retired from uh, his active duties, uh, but he recently jumped in to uh, review pull requests so to, to, to get over this, uh, let's say, slow progress. Um, and last uh, but not least, it's summertime, so it's vacation time. Uh, people are outside and and enjoying the sun, and uh, not much is going on in the in the BISC world on the on the uh, on the on the uh, on the uh, on the guys that worked on BISC for a, a longer time now. So. My projection, my, my, my projection, I think uh, within two or three weeks, we are fully up to speed again. People are coming back from vacation. People are getting involved with uh, uh, BISC uh, again. And the, the slow uh, movement we have, we, we see now is going away. So I believe we, we can make it. And, and that is basically the, uh, the reason why, why Maybe some people thought there is not much going on in BISC. Um, I don't know, Manfred. Do you have any thoughts on on that? Uh, can you? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe maybe give it a little bit of back a uh, long a long back uh, as a, uh, a background to the history also, <clears throat> because yeah, for new developers just joining, it's kind of like a little bit of a weird view. It's basically the the, the the worst time what we have in BISC from the development uh, resources side over the last two years, I think. I mean, just in back in April, we have been basically five, uh, roughly five full-time developers. And now we have, uh, I think Florian is the only kind of full-time developer. Um, Christoph Attenede is on holiday on, on uh, single, uh, on, on uh, how it's called in English, uh, parenthood. Maternity uh, leave. Uh, maternity leave and uh, yeah, SQ has moved house and so on, and needed more time for uh, yeah for for this private stuff. Oscar left the project when I was stepping back in in April or May, uh, but maybe come back. He's uh, considering to jump back again, 
and so yeah, it was um, a coincidence of 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 a few bad uh, uh, developments that yeah, I was leaving then. Christoph was going to to, um, to this paternity, and um, SQ was moving house and so on. So um, all the main developers had less time, like like usually. Also, Devin usually worked also more, and at the moment there yeah, is a lot of stress in his uh, full time job and so on. And for new developers, yeah, it's had a little bit of bad, bad impression probably. So that's also why I decided to jump in a little bit more and try to help out and uh, on yeah on onboarding, knowledge transfer, and on reviewing also. Yeah, as a newcomer, I I uh, understand it's very important part of European culture to uh, have a nice uh, two month long uh, summer vacation. Is that correct? So you know. I totally understand. Uh, yeah, it's not so long usually. As it's just, um, yeah, uh, so I think four or five weeks. It's usually the normal stuff in Europe and in mean, Biscay. Yeah, you don't have more more uh, vacation than five weeks. So exactly. <laughs> two <laughs> months would be great. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, in Biscay, um, yeah, anybody can do whatever they want. There are no, yeah, when somebody wants right. to go three months on vacation, he can. I mean, it's good when he communicates, but basically, you don't need to ask any anybody. That has its uh, positive sides, of course, but it makes it all sometimes a little bit more complicated. But I mean, basically, yeah, in the UK case, that uh, developers have two months on vacation a year. It's, yeah, it's more or less. If you're coming from like an American or uh, Asian perspective, um, taking like five weeks off of vacation is kind of unheard of. But I understand it's totally uh, normal and European thing to do in the summertime. So. I, I can understand that, but I could see how some other uh, newcomers who don't live in Europe might think that's uh, unusual, some kind of cultural difference, you know? Yeah. I mean, this five yeah. weeks is usually all just split over the year. It's uh, not so usual to take five five weeks in one in one part or vacation, but yeah. In Biscuit Center. No, we, we not, do uh, actually work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, not just vacation. Yeah, but it stacks up. If the first one is uh, first main dev is on vacation for two weeks, and the second one is the two weeks after, and then there's a third one with, with some some overlap, and then there is no one else uh, left in the in the project, and uh, that is the situation I believe we find us in just yeah. now. But so uh, my guess is that in a few weeks it's it's back to uh, let's say three or four full-time developers and things are speeding up again. That sounds great. Yeah, and luckily it's uh, yeah, two uh, already very active new developers like Christoph Sturm and Witt. And there are a few other new I've uh, seen in Slack, uh, like this uh, Battle of Wizard and uh, another UI developer. And I think a few more, I have not time, I didn't have time yet to get in touch with them also. But it seems that uh, we, we are speaking up now on the dev side, and hopefully in one or two months we are much stronger there. I mean, the goal is basically yes. to have the mid -term, or the short term goal basically is that we're getting back to something like minimum five full time developers in average. I mean, full time is more than 30 hours. Closer. Yeah, I, I believe that the, the current uh, bottleneck is the, the guys that can can uh, actually merge. Uh, stuff that has been done because yeah. there is a lot of stuff that has been done in, yeah. the, in the past weeks and nobody was there to merge it. So, yeah. uh, but I we, mean, uh, we have also uh, to be very careful to not merge too quickly or reviewing too, uh, yeah, too, too of easy. Course, of course, uh, because yeah, it's it's a big risk <laughs> with everything, especially when we add new dependencies from security point of view and so. So we shouldn't make any compromises just because of the stress. And yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. And and uh, I, I believe we had the, the the tradition of having at least two reviews. Uh, so one one reviews and uh, gives his egg or something like this, and the other one reviews the pull request and then merges it. And but if there, if there is only one uh, available for merging, there is only one review, and so the pull request stays open until the second one is is going to review and merge it. Then so. Yeah, but, it was uh, not really a strong rule, but I mean, the better is, of course, when the two reviews. I think it depends on the on the pull request when there is any pull request who carries more risk. I think it's really important that, and also that it's uh, reviewed with with the ACK or so with the tested, uh, that it's tested also, not only untested. Small trivial stuff can be merged with untested ACK. 
uh, but anything which is a little bit more complex need to be tested as well. If you watch the Bitcoin community's consensus on when they merge things into Bitcoin Core, it's extremely controversial, right? I mean, they uh, treat their system as, I don't know what the market cap of Bitcoin is now, say it's you know $10 billion or something, but they'll often say like, are you sure that this code is good enough to merge into a $10 billion yeah. system? Uh, and, you know, BISC might not be at the billions dollar uh, yet, but it is, you know, measured in the thousands of Bitcoin per month, I understand, of trading volume. So if we're going to, uh, you know, follow that same logic and say, yeah, every day 50 Bitcoin are being transacted, is this code good enough to, uh, you know, and, and however much money from a security standpoint, um, how many, you know, jar dependencies uh, is everyone running on their computer? And, uh, you know, these are essentially Bitcoin wallet apps as well. We, we yeah. can't forget. And the, the DAO state yeah. with the whole conversation, everything. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, market cap that's maybe not, uh, it's not as simple as Bitcoin. There's a lot more moving parts and uh, it's a more organizational thing. So there's a lot more to lose that's not so obvious so we re we need to be just as cautious as the bitcoin community yeah. when it comes to merging anything or adding any new dependencies that's very dangerous yeah I completely agree yeah and especially with the DAO, i think we have to be a little bit more conscious and i have a little bit of feeling that this uh consciousness is not very well deployed in the in the developer and also seed note operator um, group uh that when when we have continue when we continue to have such troubles with the DAO and at some point it really breaks and it can break of course when we have a deep um, problem and uh, we issue incorrect BSQ and people are selling this BSQ and later we have to fix it and this BSQ become invalid it's it would be a terrible incident and it, mm. it's not it's not clear if, BISC, or if the BISC DAO will survive this so all the value all what everybody has earned in BSQ can go to zero when we fuck this up. So, and also not only they're yeah, going to zero, it's uh, like we've seen over the last months, trading volume on BSQ was going back because of course all these troubles, many people couldn't really use it because yeah, they didn't, it was not in sync and uh, they didn't get the BSQ blocks and all the troubles what we had now. So it has direct uh, consequences on the market cap and on the trading possibilities of BSQ, what everybody earns, it's basically our money from the contributors. And yeah, we have to really be careful that we are, that this is working smoothly, smoothly and um, yeah, that we're not. Um, yeah, that's up. something I'd actually really like to uh, uh, contribute to, or, you know, maybe work with uh, Florian on the monitoring system is to, get a very active uh, <clears throat> monitoring system of just the overall state of the DAO. And if there's any forks or any, uh, you know, block mismatches, we should uh, get some red sirens, uh, alarm bells going off on Slack and, and everything. And uh, we should look at that right away because obviously not everybody upgrades their BISC client apps right away. But if it's something like the seed nodes um, disagreeing on the state, or some of the other issues I saw over the past few days where I was setting up my new seed node, then I think that's actually a really uh, high risk issue. I guess we can um, talk about that in the next uh, agenda items, but uh, if you had anything else on the dev. Yeah, if you, if you want, I can jump in here a little bit to give the background what uh, what was causing this uh, troubles. I was no, 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 I, I, don't, I don't believe that is necessary right now. Okay. I, I, like, to, I like to focus. I, I believe uh, that's a, a good point to, to uh, uh, check off the first uh, point of the agenda and move on to the seed notes. Uh, if you are all okay with that. Yes. Yeah. I was actually wondering, could we, could we quickly maybe cover uh, some quick thoughts on attracting new developers uh, as far as, I guess I, I think about it in two parts and one, the, letting the world know that we want new developers and two, uh, onboarding, if there's anything we can do there to make it more clear or more smooth of a process for new developers. Yeah, I, I added your, your uh, uh, topic down there. I, okay. I, I, I believe we should focus on the, on the topic set for this dev call and schedule another one for for uh, other uh, topics, uh, except we have time today, then we, we can, of course, talk about it. 
but I, uh, I wanted to keep it focused so that we can title it. Uh, it's about seed notes and we talk about seed notes and that's it. Uh, and uh, focus focus on the topic at hand, if, uh, if that is okay for you. Oh, that's fine. I, I kind of thought of it as an extension of the first topic, but that, that's fine too. Yeah, uh, at the first, I, I uh, originally, uh, I did not plan to have this first topic in, in the agenda, but as, uh, as stuff, uh, I watched stuff, I, I thought it would be good to at least uh, lose a few words on, on this, on this uh, topic so that people kind of settle down and say, okay, it's, it's everything is on track, but it's just a little slow. So that, okay, that was the motivation of, of, of the first agenda point. But it is in the topic queue, and we will talk about it uh, eventually. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, well then, seed notes. Uh, I don't know. I I have this uh, point sync here. Uh, is everybody familiar what a seed note is, what it does, and what the risks are? Because I don't know uh, what the risks are. Okay. I I, I believe uh, I, I prepared. A very very extensive graphic, and uh, let me the annotation. Uh, I talk <laughs> a bit. Uh, I talk a bit about uh, what a seed node is and what it's there for, and uh, the issues we have with the seed nodes, and maybe uh, the issues they cause on the whole network. So a seed node is basically nothing else than a, a normal day-to-day uh, -day BISC client. Uh, with the difference, it, it runs without without the GUI, and but the the the, the functionality is basically the same. Um, you you start a, you start a seed node, and uh, the seed node searches for other seed nodes, of course, like every uh, client does. And uh, let's say we have this this seed node one, and uh, it starts up and tries to reach seed node two. Let's say seed node two is already uh, up and running, and so this is a, a get preliminary data request, something like this. So it gets the the, the status of the network uh, before its hidden service is hidden service is even published. If the hidden service is published, so the seed node is reachable by others. Uh, there is this updated uh, get updated data request, something like this, and uh, uh, things are. Uh, we try to to uh, get the seed node up to speed on the current network. Uh, status. Uh, every seed node does this, and uh, that's basically it. Now, if a client starts up, uh, it asks the seed nodes because a few seed nodes, uh, at least these eight seed nodes we have, are hard coded. And uh, if a new client starts up, uh, the, it contacts the seed nodes, and the seed nodes are basically the, the for, for bootstrapping, let's say, bootstrapping the network. Uh, they are not needed uh, if you already started your your client once successfully, because then your client knows uh, other peers, and maybe it doesn't need the seed nodes again. Uh, however, the seed nodes are among the first uh, uh, client uh, connects to on startup because we we believe that uh, uh, it's much quicker and reliable to to get the the peer to peer network status to the new client if you. Uh, use the seed nodes. So um, with that, if a seed node misbehaves, let's say it's gone out of sync, it has not, uh, uh, it has a lack of, it, it misses a number of, let's say, mailbox messages. And the client connects to the seed node that misses uh, the mailbox messages. Uh, then uh, another uh, the your BISC client will not receive a mailbox message uh, that says, for example, that someone has paid uh, uh, or proceeded with, with the trade you had with someone. So uh, if this mis message goes missing or you don't receive the message, then there is, yeah, there is arbitration due. So uh, the risk is if, if seed nodes do not have uh, the whole uh, uh, status of the network, there is inconvenience for uh, the user and the arbitrator. Uh, Bernard, do you want to say something? Because mm. I think you just raised your hand something. Yeah. So those hard coded, I understand the hard coded seed notes, right? But um, so the other ones, uh, they just 
if I would start a new seed node, it would connect to those existing ones and advertise as a seed node. Exactly. So mm -hmm. those... No, uh, no, there is yep. no advertising for a seed node. So when there is only the hard-coded seed nodes, uh, which are treated as seed nodes, when you start a seed node, it's like a normal BISC node. It's not used as a seed node for other nodes. Yeah, because nobody knows about it. Yeah, so uh, nobody will connect. I mean, the, the seed nodes are really only hardly required for the first time user because he doesn't know any other nodes. Theoretically or practically, you can add on the program argument any other nodes when you know one on your address and then you even don't need the seed node for that. And when there are no seed nodes, you connect to any other peer what you know already. But it's slower because they might not be online and they are may, may have not such a good connectivity and so on. So the main purpose, how we use the seed node is for convenience and for performance at the end. So when you start, the new, yeah, and we have only these eight seed nodes defined in the code, which are used by every user. Every user who starts up connects to multiple of those eight seed nodes, I think two or three usually. So you have more redundancy. When one is slow with response, you get it quicker from another one. And yeah. And another thing, I mean, there, there, the worst case in, in the, for that role, because the seed node has an, the, now with the DAO, the seed node has an, another important role, what uh, Florian has not talked yet about, but also for the classical case, which was already the case before the DAO, uh, the worst case is when a dispute uh, mailbox message, or when you have uh, a dispute with, in, in arbitration and you receive some message from the arbitrator, and because the seed node was uh, badly connected and he didn't get the message and you're next time connecting to this seed node and you are not receiving the mailbox message, then uh, you might, in the worst case, you might lose the arbitration case because the arbitrator think uh, you're not responding to him or whatever. And you could lose basically the money and, and yeah, maybe you are in the right position, but because the arbitrator think you are not responding, he make the payment to the other guy. And we had a few not, I think there was never money really lost, but we had a few cases where it led to complications and to chaos in, in the dispute. So, yeah, that's basically the, the worst what can happen. The other is, yeah, in a trade, when you don't get the message, you end up in a, in a dispute unnecessarily, and, but then, yeah, it's not a financial loss usually. So, um, yeah, well, uh, so what's the point of uh, starting this? New seed node, but it's not hard coded. Uh, There's no point, yeah. basically. So at the moment, I mean, that's maybe on our further to do list, but not really specified so far, but would be probably good at some point to make the deployment of seed nodes more flexible that it's not hard coded. It comes with a little, especially because it, the seed nodes are now serving the DAO uh, blocks, or so the the blocks which contains uh, BSQ transactions, and that has a little bit of security, similar like SPV in a in a way, as a, a malicious seed node who is sending you blocks where uh, transactions are missing, can yeah can trick you in a situation uh, again like yeah can lead to a dispute or whatever. Somebody paid you BSQ, but the seed node is not sending you the transaction, so you are not aware of it when you are not running a full node, a full down node. You can run your BISC application as a full download, but then you need Bitcoin Core configured with RPC and everything. And most people are not doing this. So most people are running BISC as a light node, as, as a light node and full node is here only referring to the DAO, not to the Bitcoin part. And the, all the seed nodes are running as DAO full nodes and they are serving, yeah, you make a get blocks request, so give me all the BSQ blocks what I'm missing and the seed node is sending you the blocks which only contains the BSQ transaction. It's basically the seed node gets the full block from the Bitcoin core with the 2000 transactions, is filtering for BSQ transactions. There might be two or three BSQ transactions, one block, and then the seed node is sending you the block with only those three transactions that it is much less like a normal full block. Um, I, I like to jump in here uh, uh, it, just to, to get the, 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 the uh, non-DAO stuff of the of the seed of the role of the seed nodes out of the way. Uh, uh, you can you can see my screen. Uh, is this yeah. is this correct? Yes, we can see. Yeah, um, uh, this is this is uh, uh, the last seven days, let's say, of of 
of, of monitoring of the seed nodes. Uh, and we see, we see we have here, the, the, for example, the filter messages, we have mailbox storage messages, and we have offer payload messages. And you see the different colors are the different seed nodes. Um, what, we, what we can see is that, for example, let me get rid of this pointer. Uh, we have we have some some uh, differences in in the status of the of the seed nodes. Um, there is, for example, the seven two three seed node has twenty four mailbox messages more, or twenty five more than the RM seven seed node, and that is that is uh, a difference we that we we don't like to have, but. Of course, it's a it's a dynamic network, and uh, and it's what it is. Uh, if there is if there is a difference of 200, 500, something like this, then it would be a real issue. But I think we we had this, we we uh, get control over this. Uh, I believe what we can also see is, uh, for example, this orange line, uh, the dots, the orange dots, uh, shows. Uh, I believe the, this 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 is it looks like uh, the the daily restart of Manfred's branch of the seed nodes, because uh, there is a difference of let's say yeah eighteen plus uh, of, of of mailbox messages for mailbox messages for example, and it's yeah it's some some it's the tenth of August and then on the eleventh of August same time uh, the the uh, there is another. Uh, uh, jump in the in the line and uh, we have less difference yes uh, the that is the that is the, the the issue we have with the seed notes that they run out of sync and we don't know exactly why that is and uh, that is an open issue may, may I jump in here a little bit <coughs> um, of course, of course. All, all those um, all those network messages are here they have a time to live which is uh, different long, or like for the offers, it's only, I think, five minutes. So when an offer, offer has to be refreshed all the time to stay online. When you're losing network connection, your offer is dead after five minutes and it, it gets removed everywhere from the network. But for offers, it's very usual that they're not, uh, the offers come and go when every time when you are starting up an application, you are publishing your offers. When you shut down, you're removing the offers and this data is not arriving everywhere at the same time. So that's very usual that it's not 100% the same. For mailbox messages, they have a very long time to live, I think one or two months. So, but they should be basically not so much different like we have seen now. And I think it's related to the problem what we have over the last five or six weeks with the seed notes that, um, yeah, especially as a few weeks back, there have been some issues uh, with the connectivity. So there was one port open and when this port got, uh, when yeah, people were sending some garbage to this port that has caused basically a resync from Genesis, which takes then two or three hours. And this time the signal is basically on 100% CPU and not fully available and not probably uh, yeah, lose a lot of connections. And it's very likely that in, this, in that time, the seed node has lost a mailbox message. And I think that's the reason why we have now such a big diff with the mailbox messages, which is not good and shouldn't be so high. But uh, the mailbox messages, they get removed from the user when the user is receiving the mailbox message. He's removing it and send out the remove message. But again, when the remove message is, that's not stored, that's uh, just flooded in the network. And when, it, when it's too late already, like at the moment probably we have some dead uh, mailbox messages which have been removed already, but some seed not have not received the remove message. So they still kept the mailbox message. And uh, now when an, another seed node has removed it already, and now when he's requesting their mailbox message or the data from one of the seed nodes who have more mailbox message, he gets this again, and this will be dangling another one or two months. After one or two months, it gets cleaned out because of the time to live. But in this time, it's basically, uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt really. It's just a little bit more data which is basically not needed anymore it doesn't cause any harm um, but with stable seed nodes this uh, diff should be quite low I think not more like what I remember in the past it was usually not more like yeah mailbox message uh, usually the same number of offers so when there are 300 offers then there are roughly 300 mailbox messages and I think what I remember roughly it was maybe the diff was something like five or ten 
but not uh, it's, I think at the moment we have something like 20 or more um, but I think that get cleaned out and it's in my opinion not really a critical issue but it has shown that the instability of seed nodes over the last weeks has has yeah has had uh, several consequences yeah so we uh, the, the alert uh, uh, in the other uh, graph is, is set to plus minus 20 and we have a total of uh, let's see 550 mailbox storage messages so maybe that's that's okay yeah yes miss yeah. yes i have a question so now that i'm running the jhg uh seed node how can i receive notifications from your monitoring system in regards to um, the node that I'm looking after now because I'd like to know if any of these uh, parameters you're monitoring go outside the acceptable limits not only like in a critical state but just if it's a little bit out of sync with the network just so I can kind of check on the node and see if everything's okay well you you can't that's the simple and short answer. Uh, we had tried it to, uh, to uh, I, it, there, there is, we, we can uh, uh, connect it to Slack, but uh, let me see if you, if you observe, uh, we have false positives, we had false positives in the, in the past because of uh, the stuff uh, uh, Manfred talked about, the seed notes having too much CPU load and so on, took too long to respond and the monitor says, well, I didn't get anything, I must assume that is offline. And then we had multiple uh, alerts per day, and we decided to not uh, route it to Slack and first tweak a little on the on the monitor timeouts and so that we reduce the false positives, which is the progress I am on to. And uh, just uh, I, I believe I can I can make it uh, for to a reasonable false positive rate, let's say, uh, by the end of uh, August, so in uh, two weeks or something like this, then I'm 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 reasonably sure that. Uh, Spamming Slack with alerts will not hurt the, the whole thing so that people do not uh, take the alerts serious anymore. Uh, but that yeah, is in the past, and, with yeah. the other uh, monitoring systems, my understanding of how they work is that if there is a, a false positive rate like this where a node might just be slow for one request or something, they can uh, you can define a certain number of uh, slow requests that must happen in uh, consecutively so if the past 10 requests have all been slow then issue some kind of alert or something like this uh, might be just a simple way to filter out those false positives uh, yeah the, the the monitoring system is not that powerful let's say uh, but what we are doing is we, we uh, wait uh, I, I believe it's about 50 minutes or so as 15 minutes uh, before we check again and if the node is still not up and we ask every seven six seven minutes for for data uh, and if the monitor is uh, if the if the node is not up in the in the 15 minutes we wait another five minutes try again and only then if the node is still not up uh, then an alarm is triggered uh, the issue is uh, has been that the nodes have been under heaviest load I don't know why we don't know why uh, and it happens it happened quite often so uh, basically the the, alar the alarms were uh, correct because the node if, if it doesn't respond to uh, the monitor it doesn't respond to a uh, client as well so uh, yeah. but they 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 caught it uh, themselves and, and healed themselves so uh, we knew there is an issue uh, but nothing we yeah it, it's a difficult it's a difficult uh, decision to make yeah, I think, I mean, of course, we shouldn't spam too much and so, but I think it would be good when we get soon to this point, even if it's too, too, uh, too much and their operators need to look into it, maybe they don't find anything, but then it's kind of like the play, okay, when it's, uh, when it's issue of the monitoring, they come back to you and you have to fix it. When it's issue in the code, then they come to the developers and the developer has to fix it. When it's something else, <coughs> like this issue is what we had, what caused the problems. Uh, yeah, it was mainly this open port, something super easy to fix at the end, but yeah, we were not aware of this. And this port cost, also this, yeah, some random calls to this port cost uh, a resync from Genesis, and then yeah, two, three hours, the monitor was basically completely under heavy load. And when we would have discovered this earlier, when, uh, when the monitoring 
would have posted all the time messages on Slack, it would have been better actually because it took us whatever two weeks until we really fixed this or more. And so I would I, I understand that yeah, of course it was not still reliable enough to uh but yeah, I think the, the earlier we get there the better. And even I think everybody involved should have basically take it very serious, investigate when oh, yeah. they cannot escalate it to to who can further help. And we need to get this solved over the next one or two months really because it's taking uh, uh, and we've seen now the troubles i mean that bsq is not traded as much as before is a result of this and it has financial consequences directly now i just Foreign, uh, i just activated uh, the notifications <laughs> let's see how yeah, what i have a <laughs> yeah Okay, I have a quick question for Florian. Um, I'm, I've never used this. Uh, I'm sorry. What what is it called again? The uh, Safana or the, Gra Grafana, it looks like it. Grafana. Yes. Yes, Grafana. Yeah, very beautiful um, uh, graphs and charts and everything. And I think this is um, correct me if I'm wrong. Meant to be used more of like an analytics platform or um, maybe for the actual monitoring uh, system notifications. We might consider using something like Nagios or Isenga, one of these uh, more, you know, not necessarily enterprise, but open source enterprise uh, monitoring systems that I think might be better suited for the actual Slack notifications. Because it looks like you've done a really great job with the um, visualizations and uh, actually getting the data from the individual uh, seed nodes, but maybe Nagios would be better for doing the actual like alerts notifications since I think they they spend a lot more time um, you know, like you said filtering out the false positives and uh, this kind of uh, you know mobile app integration and things like that. Yeah, so basically, basically the Grafana thing is just the the front end, and you can't create non beautiful graphs. Uh, <laughs> um, the the main the main uh, the main issue is uh, monitoring in general. In, in our case, how do we get the, the data? And uh, for now, it's it's a it's a it's a it's multiple very small uh, BISC nodes basically with very limited limited functionality, which do uh, query the network uh, periodically and and try to to provide the data. Uh, this data is then sent to the, the graphite. I think it's graphite. It's it's a it's kind of a database in the background uh, where the data is stored. And Grafana does only the the the, the, the display. Um, uh, yes, I, I haven't I haven't uh, uh, looked at Nagios to be to be honest. Uh, but we have uh, how how it's called Prometheus. We had we had uh, the thought we could use Prometheus, but uh, in the end we decided that this approach would be the best because the, the nodes are already under heavy stress, and if we if we uh, query them every second or so, it, it wouldn't be wouldn't make stuff any better. So we more or less settled with this. Uh, and yes, I will take a look at at Nagios. And see if we can use it without much, let's say, uh, overhead. But I yeah, think we, let's um, yeah let's work to directly together on that after the call. Um, I have a lot of more experience working with Nagios, and okay. uh, it's a lot more modular and, and uh, optimized for the notifications part. So let's let's talk after the call. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we, we uh, have the seed node uh, situation, uh, what a seed node is and what it does, uh, I believe, yeah, well, the, the DAO part is, is missing. Um, uh, basically, the DAO part is, is exactly as the other messages a seed node distributes, uh, but of course, it's, it's DAO state uh, uh, messages, and if they are out of sync, they are critical. It's, it, they are critical to the, to the whole BISC network. So if they go out of sync, it's more bad than if an offer message got lost. But basically, the, the concept behind this is the same. Uh, <coughs> do you agree, Manfred? Uh, yeah, I think you forgot. Uh, there are, for the normal um, BISC network, there are non-critical data like the offers or the mailbox messages, which are already a little bit more critical, but still non-critical. But then there are critical data, which are the arbitrators or the filter messages. Uh, yeah, the arbitrators when you cannot trade when there is no arbitrator and when 
there are two arbitrators, so that always all did not have to exactly the same arbitrate, the number yeah. of arbitrators. Or I, I have this, this graph here. There's a separate graph for the, the, the critical stuff, and it's the alerts and the arbitrators, and we see there is no, no um, uh, difference. It has never been. So that's, that's pretty much stable. Yeah. And <laughs> with the DAO, uh, I, I, I don't want to interrupt you too much. <laughs> Just I'm wondering if I should give a little bit of background about this hashes because uh, yeah, maybe not so clear what it means exactly. The three different hashes, what we're using in the DAO monitoring, the yeah, DAO state on. hash and the... Yeah, <clears throat> so the DAO state is basically the main data structure which contains as data input the Bitcoin blocks, which contains BSQ transactions. Then uh, the proposal peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer network data and the blind vote peer-to-peer -peer network data. So those three data sources are the main input to get to the DAO state. And the DAO state itself, it, it contains the whole result from the voting and all this stuff. So it's quite complex and quite a lot of different stuff in. And the DAO state um, has to be basically the same at every block. Because at every new block, the DAO state changes just by the uh, block hash of the new block. It can be out of sync because Bitcoin can have a chain split for a short time until the next rework. And in this time, it's well at case that yeah, one user received uh, uh, the Bitcoin transaction from <coughs> Uh, chain A and another user from chain B, and then they would have a different DAO state. It's I have not seen this so far, and but it, a valid case can happen, but it should be resolved very quickly. Also, then when you, yeah, when you are, uh, when you re when you when a rework is triggered on the Bitcoin side, you will go back to the next snapshot. As we are making snapshots locally from every DAO state every twenty blocks, and you go back to the next snapshot and resync again from there which is very fast because only between 20 and 40 blocks then, and then you are on the same state again. Um, so the DAO state is the most important. That really has to be the same hash. Yeah, we are creating a hash of the whole state. So when you have the same hash, you have exactly the same data structure. Uh, when you don't have the same hash, it doesn't mean that there's a critical bug like we had uh, a week ago, what we discovered. It was basically a small bug which didn't have any consequences really, but it created a different hash and needed to be fixed, of course. Um, but it's a very help, very helpful um, way to discover any, yeah, any, any inconsistency of the, of the network. And the other two are the proposal hash and the blind vote hash. The proposal data only get kind of like frozen after, yeah, when the proposal uh, phase is over then all the proposals get created and then they are not changing anymore for the whole cycle. So there's basically only one block when a new hash is created for these proposals and they have to be the same amount of proposals, the same number of proposals and the same hash. Uh, and the same is basically with the blind vote. So after the blind vote phase, uh, we are collecting all the blind votes and creating the hash and they should be the same. In here it can be, so it, uh, it's a little bit less critical when there would be nodes which have not received all the proposals or whatever. It still, uh, yeah, it still can be okay. The network has to deal with this because uh, the peer-to-peer -peer network data have this eventually consistency and you cannot guarantee that every node has the same uh, data. But in the voting, but I don't want to get in this that gets too much, we have built in some extra features and security to ensure that the vote result is uh, based on the same uh, state. So <clears throat> let's say you have only received 19 proposals and 20 <clears throat> blind votes and somebody else has 20 proposals and 21 votes. And at the vote result, there's a majority who has seen the 20 and the 21, then you are basically on the loser side and you have to get this missing data, otherwise you are out of sync of the network. But before the voting, it basically both are valid in a way only with the voting, with using the vote stake when 80% of the vote stake have one different few or one special few of the peer-to-peer -peer network data, that is basically the winning few. And then those users who don't have this peer-to-peer -peer network data, they need to research and get the missing data from, from the other nodes, from the seed nodes. Um, quick uh, question. Um, thank you. 
thank you for going into detail about the, uh, the how the DAO state works. Um, maybe is there a flow chart or some other uh, DAO documentation on, on how this stuff no. works? Unfortunately, uh, not. No, I never had time to write. To really I, I, talk for this. Let's let's make one because uh, that's something I'm very interested to understand is how the DAO works. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. For your can maybe we make an extra session once about the DAO? I mean, there's one video where I explained. Also, I posted in the Dev Channel uh, this video series where I did in a half year ago. So it's some videos about these different areas like the peer-to-peer -peer network, the DAO, the Bitcoin part, and so on, uh, which covers already quite a bit. But uh, we can go on with a, with a follow-up uh, session about the DAO, because that DAO is yeah, it's a huge part and it's quite complex. Yeah, agreed. Um, uh, Manfred, I do have a, a question. If we, uh, uh, let me zoom in on, on, this, uh, on this part of, of, the, of our history. Uh, there we had some, some, I believe it was the last voting cycle. Uh, uh, we have different uh, hashes. Is, is, if, if, we, if we take the seed nodes out of the equation, does the DAO work? Uh, is it a if there is, if there is no there? seed node, does the DAO work? Uh, you, need, you need a full node. Uh, <clears throat> so when there would not be seed nodes, you will also try to connect to any random node. And when this is not a, a full node, he will not deliver you the PSQ uh, blocks, so you cannot use PSQ. You so if we, if we, if we say it. that uh, uh, client uh, applications are never full nodes, then if the seed nodes die, we don't have a full node, and so the DAO yeah, cannot yeah, work. Yeah. I mean, people can run locally their full node, or when course, they know a full course. node, they're connecting this. So it's not, it's not um, deadly critical, but practically it's very critical also when the the DAO is not working when the seed nodes are not working practically. Can we financially incentivize the ordinary users to run uh, full DAO nodes in a trustless way? Um, trustless is a bad word. <laughs> it would be well, I mean, if, if you can get some you know, discount on your trading fees by running a DAO full node, I think this would be an excellent way to uh, decentralize the network. I think it basically the easiest would be when we're extending the seed nodes. <clears throat> I mean, it's a little bit distrusted, as I said. Uh, if, when you connect to any uh, full node and you get, and this is a malicious node and it's holding back some BSQ transaction, he cannot lie because you're doing all the verification. But when you don't get a transaction, yeah, you cannot verify it. It's similar like with SPV. You can only make withhold attacks, basically, which cannot cause big troubles, but can cause still disputes and so on. Um, so, but that's already a reason why we don't really want that the random peers are delivering the service. So I think it's, um, it's a trusted role in a way. And when we see that we need more, I think we should, just should extend the number of seed nodes to 20 or whatever, what we need. I think For eight now. is good enough. Yeah. But I mean, maybe in the, over the time when we have have it really under control, we, we should extend already so something like twelve seed nodes. Um, but yeah. Uh, but but I think Probably. the the idea is 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 quite nice actually. Uh, but of course, uh, we had you have to to, to um, make sure that uh, we don't have to trust the peer that is running the full node. And it is quite difficult, but um, the idea is good. And if we have uh, our seed nodes under control, uh, so there is no uh, going out of sync or they uh, resync themselves and so on, we may think about that in the future. But I think uh, it's not a topic for pff, the next year, at least. Mm. I, I can I imagine one possible attack might be to do some kind of coordinated DDoS attack against all the seed nodes, and then uh, the attacker would run their own DAO full nodes with their uh, withholding attack, something like this. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, there, there are for sure many possible attacks, but I think, uh, yeah, when somebody wants to shut down this, there are easier ways probably, and I think the, the attacks which really would lead to lost money are probably more critical like those which like with holding yeah you cannot lose bsq by this you can the worst case basically you get a dispute because you expect a transaction and you don't see it 
which yeah doesn't you can always look up in the in the PSQ block explorer and you see it there when this is not attacked as well. Oh, so that's a full node that cannot be attacked. Like I mean, it can be DDoS, but it cannot be with the withhold attack. Cannot be attacked. And I mean, another thing is, uh, it, this problem is less critical when we we have to improve the request, uh, the way how we are requesting PSQ uh, blocks. At the moment, it's only requested from one uh, node, and we still have troubles with this. If anybody like, I can explain a little bit uh, more closely what's the problem. Yeah, uh, uh, we have this on the agenda for the, it's a uh, why stuff goes out yeah. of sync, and and maybe we can we can uh, include it in in that one. Yeah, uh, but when we would request from several nodes the PSQ blocks, the withhold attack, which had would have less uh, effect because when at least one honest node is giving you the transaction, you get the transaction. But to do this really right, it's a little bit complex because uh, you have to look into the blocks. It's not only that you are counting the blocks and you see, okay, I have passed block number 500,000. You also need to check if block 500,000 from seed node A contains the same hash, basically, or the same transactions like block 500,000 from node B, and that's at the moment not uh, done, and so it gets a little bit more effort to do it right. And it's the question if it's a reasonable, it's a, it's a, a, it's a basic uh, weakness, but I think there are probably from priority other things which are more, more relevant, uh, but yeah. Okay. So I believe we can move on to the next point in the in the agenda. So we 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 now know what the seed. Oh no, there's something missing. The the issue itself is missing. Um, if, uh, let's go back to this uh, mighty uh, graph. Uh, if we have if we have the the issue now is that if a seed node is up and running, it it has its its initial synchronization with the network, but then it only listens to the network. And there is no synchronization between the seed nodes going on after they have started. So if, if uh, for example, a client says, well, uh, I, I don't know, uh, there is a mailbox message made, waiting for, I, I want to, uh, client one, let's say this is client one and client two. And client one wants to send, uh, I have started the payment message to client two. And client two is offline. So the client one sends to the seed nodes, well, um, there is a payload message containing well i have started uh, the stuff uh, and i don't i don't i'm not sure but i think the the message is not only sent to one seed node can you yeah can you, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, there are so you send it to every client you know to every node you know yeah basically, yeah, basically to nearly yeah. all your peers okay. it's usually uh, roughly eight peers uh, and it gets flooded in a network, even if you're not connected okay. to a seed node, because after a while, usually you don't have a seed node anymore under, uh, under your peers, but the seed node receives it from any other peer what he's connected to. Okay, and uh, let's say let's say seed uh, three is, I don't know, that there is some reason seed node three don't, doesn't get the message. So seed node three will never get the message. Maybe uh, except seed node two uh, uh, forwards the message, but uh, the, there is a chance that seed node three, for example, doesn't get the message. And uh, if it stays that way, seed node three doesn't have the message. So if client two uh, connects to seed node three, four, five, and six, he never gets the message, for example. Uh, and we do not have uh, 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 a synchronization once the seed nodes are up and running. And that is maybe. Uh, something we we have to discuss be, uh, by, uh, or or even we have to solve yes uh, Riz? yes um wouldn't a simple solution be to just have all the seed nodes uh connect to each other so for example if there's only eight nodes that would only be an additional seven connections per seed node maximum yeah so um, uh, i mean the synchronization is basically this get, get data message uh, what you usually do on layered startup. And I think we just need basically do this get data message uh, continuously every hour or every half an hour or whatever, so that the seed node, like we had uh, with this problem with this open port, it could have been that the seed node three was doing the full recent from Genesis and the network, yeah, the resources were so occupied that he lost all the connections to all the other nodes. So in this two or three hours, 
he didn't get the mailbox messages and then he carried on going. So without any restart or whatever, he would never get the mailbox messages because it would just get flooded in a network and then it's done. So the flooding stops after one minute or whatever. And so when the seed node three would have uh, per periodically uh, get data request, he would have synced up again. Uh, yeah, it was three hours. He was basically in bad condition, but then with the next get data, he would receive all the missing data and the problem would be less critical. Uh, yeah, and moment, exactly that is, the, the, that is the issue. It's not that simple. Of course, it's not that simple. Uh, why? Uh, why, why, okay. why it's not that simple? Yeah, well, I tried it. I tried it half a year ago. I started half a year ago to do a, a continuous sync uh, with the update data request, something like this. And then you get data. And I tried it with a, with a, a seed node. And the seed node had uh, double the messages every other seed node had. Because it's different, uh, it's, it's difficult to, to, to uh, adjust the local status. Um, I don't believe that, is, that it is practical to just uh, remove the... the uh, uh, let's start, let's start. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, somewhere no. different. Uh, we, have, we have this, uh, let me get rid of these uh, um, lines so that I can see, or yes. And close well tools. Um, that is basically what what we have uh, in progress. There is a daily restart. That is what Manfred's branch does, and what the master doesn't. Uh, and yesterday I, I created this uh, 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 a branch on the master we can use for uh, for the seed notes. This this branch is. Let me show you quickly. Um, the last change. Well, there is uh, there is the the shutdown interval, and if and if it if it exceeds the shutdown interval, it's uh, 24 hours. Yes, then the whole thing goes down, and if uh, everything else is uh, configured correctly, and the OS knows okay, it goes down because of failure. Uh, then it can restart, and so we have uh, every 24 hours the, the a seed node restarts. Um, basically, what we are doing with, with this approach is that uh, a seed node uh, 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 loses all the status it has and starts completely new. So there is no, no history involved, uh, and that is uh, a, a solution, I would say, but not the best one. Uh, if you if you try to to sync it online, then you have to decide. Well, uh, it, there there are some some race condition situations where, for example, seed node two uh, gets a remove data request just a, a tad before seed node three gets a remove uh, something request, uh, and while seed node uh, two already had uh, the the uh, remove data request. Uh, then ask seed node three for for a sync, and seed node three has this data still because it hasn't received the remove data request, and so seed node two has the data again uh, against uh, it. It already had removed it, but it it got it again from seed node three, and so you have this one uh, 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 blob of data that doesn't go away because seed node two already received the remove uh, uh, request and. Uh, and that is uh, that is dif difficult to to synchronize this this whole stuff. So uh, I tried it, and it's not that simple. Uh, yes, yes, Miss. Yes. Uh, I, wouldn't it? I mean, so for this problem um, has existed for many times. So, for example, starting from I think the 1980s, um, PGP key servers uh, yeah, tried something similar, right? Like, if you wanted to delete your PGP key from one key server, you could do that. But then other key servers would just sync and uh, put your key right back on the all the key servers. And so what they realize is that, oh, yeah, actually, it's impossible to delete something from the Internet. The only thing you can do is post a cryptographically signed revoke certificate that would, you know, append a new entry to the key and kind of tell everybody that, yeah, this key is no longer used, but you could never actually delete that data. And I think that's why, for example, the Bitcoin blockchain is also append only because there's no way to delete data. Like how exactly. could this possibly ever work, right? 
Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, one solution is the time to live. Also those data uh, have any way expiry date. So when, when, yeah, like the offers, when they don't get updated, they are dead after five minutes, uh, the mailbox message after one month or so. Uh, and I think we could, I mean, we have a manage, it's a little bit too complex for to go into details here, but we have a manage, uh, this, this data is usually stored in some hash tables and the hash of the data is used to see if the data is already there. And I think we need an additional data structure. At the moment, when you re remove it, you just delete it from the hash table. And then when it gets added again, you don't know that you have already removed it before and you don't want to get added again. So I think we need an additional hash table for kind of like historical remove. And then before you add it, you check if this, if this data was already removed by a remove message in the past. When it was removed, you don't add it again and then you avoid that you are filling up data again, which have been removed, in fact, by the... Wouldn't that be uh, um, vulnerable to some, like, security concerns? Like, for example, somebody could flood the network with these uh, delete data requests? And, exactly. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to verify. So you only can... Uh, the mailbox message can only be removed by the receiver with cryptographic uh, signatures uh, protected. Uh, so only... Uh, when you have the yeah, when you can provide the signature which match the public key, uh, it's allowed to remove it. And also, all this data is encrypted and signed. So I think I mean the only real basic problem with everything in a peer-to-peer -peer is these offset attack. Uh, and yeah, that's another big topic, of course. Okay, so I guess the obvious follow-up question to any of these DDoS attacks is that uh, does BIS currently have any? implemented method to automatically ban peers that are doing bad things like for example in bitcoin yes. e, there's a score based system okay so how does that work um could you explain that very quickly um there are there are multiple uh, mechanisms in, in in place uh one for example is if you if you get if you get spammed with messages uh, uh the, if the, the the time between messages is too short you you uh, either uh not receive the message or dump the message or eventually i think you you block the host uh, for example it's a very very easy one and uh, the the most powerful one i think it's it's the filter messages if i'm if i'm correct uh, filter messages there is a there is a developer a developer key uh, hard coded into the the bisc client and if some node misbehaves uh, uh, you can uh, a developer can uh, adjust by by a filter message. Adjust the network to ignore this very node. So there is a whole span of of things and mechanisms yeah. in place. I mean, the, yeah, the filter message mainly used against scammers. Like we had this chargeback yeah. scammer. <laughs> then, um, yeah, one of the developers. Yeah, but what you what you basically do is you say, well, don't talk to this node. Uh, I mm. think it's actually not on the peer to peer network level. It's only <clears throat> for the trade. Oh, it's view. not trade okay. Based. Yeah, I think I'm not 100% sure if we have something on the peer to peer network level as well, but I think not. But maybe a good point, maybe it would be good to add this as well. On the peer to peer, yeah, it's uh, several things like when you get uh, uh, data which are too big, like expected, or different message types, what not uh, defined in BISC or whatever. All this would lead basically to disconnection. So an attacker need to stay in all these limits, but still by staying in these limits, he can. He can DDoS and, and create damage in its ongoing yeah, efforts. Of course, of course. It's a big, big long term effort to get the peer to peer network more resilient. And here, I mean, it's like in Bitcoin also, Bitcoin peer to peer network is uh, vulnerable to DDoS attacks, but it costs money to do it. And when you stop doing it, the peer to peer network comes back. So it's kind of, yeah, you can stop it for a while. It's a kind of like a race uh, with resources and so on. And, but, um, it's the it's the same gay bar over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, a, not only on BISC. Yeah, sure. But I mean, it's for sure a big area where we need to improve and lots to improve for sure. But basic protection is already in place. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, that is uh, that is the difference between the master branch and Manfred's branch. Uh, we have this daily restart to, to keep the, uh, the nodes synchronized. Uh, yes. Yeah. Something. There's also a check for the memory, which is now hard coded with 1,200 uh, megabyte, 
And I tested when I was running the seed node, I tested different settings and that was basically working well for me, which usually triggered a restart once a day with this memory. Uh, we yeah, had a memory that has been a, a long time ago, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure if there's still a rise of memory, but probably not, hopefully not, as this memory leak was, is fixed, uh, it seems. But it's the 24 hours is basically when it was not started before by going over this memory limit. Then it's twenty. Then it starts at least every twenty-four hour. Otherwise, it starts when it goes over one thousand two hundred Mbit, or you are defining it by a program argument when you want to set it different. Yeah. So, um, wouldn't the collect the analytics show if we have a memory leak on the uh, graph? Yes. Easy to spot. That. But we do not collect um, the, <laughs> the metrics uh, as of uh, yet. <laughs> so you are create, uh, basically the first one who who sent me a key. To include in the in the monitoring, uh, that's kind of disappointing to hear. Yes. Uh, why is nobody else uh, monitoring their seed nodes? It's this is like critical infrastructure, right? Well, uh, first of all, is uh, I have uh, only uh, uh, last month, uh, a few weeks ago, I have updated the, the uh, seed node how to, and in the process of doing this, I, I created the infrastructure and the information how to uh, do the collect D thing. Um, so it's quite new and nobody has adopted it since. Uh, but of course... Do we have some kind is, of uh, financial incentive or, or some way to push the, the uh, seed node operators to uh, get this up and running as soon as possible? There is another a proposal ongoing. I think Manfred initiated it that we, have, uh, that we can uh, uh, pay some, some additional uh, uh, bounty or something if a seed node... Uh, serves a, a, a level of, 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 of quality, but uh, we haven't come to a conclusion yet how to decide on if this uh, is, is, is I applicable. I was thinking more of a negative thing. Like if uh, everybody, e even if they have to post a small bond, uh, like, a, like a, you know, 100 BSQ or something where I promise to always, you know, keep up to date with the current policies of running a seed node and, uh, you know, if if people are worried about losing their small bond, they'll probably do it, right? We don't have to, to make it such like a huge bond, but we should use that uh, bond revoking uh, mechanism, just just the threat of, of yeah. losing their... Yeah, I mean, midterm, we should use the 20,000 PSQ bond, uh, but I think we are still not there, that the other infrastructure is so stable, the documentation. I think at the moment, the seed node operators are a little bit in hanging in the air. They don't know exactly what to do. And so, and we have to make it more clear, like uh, this branch, for instance, it's not, uh, please run this branch. You have to run this branch, point. You have not, you must not run master because it's a risk when you are not syncing all the time. And we, at the moment, we don't have a better solution. So that's the best solution. And every seed node operator have to run this. And when we are further with the reporting and, uh, and with this um, monitoring, everybody has to point. There's no discussion about this. So when somebody is doing as, uh, the role of being a seed node operator, they have to do this. Maybe not in one day, but at least in one week, they have to install this. When they cannot do it for whatever reason, we have to find other people who are taking the role. So I would like to propose that we start enforcing this immediately, but with a lower amount than 20,000, even if it's only 100 BSQ or something, um, you know, it's better than zero because it creates that uh, enforcement mechanism to you know, get the seed node operators to start using Collecti or, or yeah. run this but, branch or this tag. You know, right. I mean, yes. the PSQ bond, when it gets confiscated, uh, it's also not the light decision. I mean, basically, it should be only confiscated when it is a severe violation, when a seed node operator but, just doesn't care or is really malicious. And that's absolutely not the case, of course. I mean, we could just threaten to confiscate it, right? Right now, we have no uh, power yeah. at all. But at the moment, it's just, it's, I mean, it's not the, the operator's fault. It's the fault of, at the end, the developers. <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's mixed. Yeah, we, we just need to improve the overall situation. And I think then we can be more strict, basically, also. And, but I think uh, at the moment, I have a little bit the feeling that the operators are not en enough aware of the severity of the situation and of the role and of the importance of the seed nodes. And we have to make it more clear, like I said, there is not optional run this, whatever you like. 
you have to run that. When the developers have found out that's the best way to do it, then the operators have to do this because, I mean, at the end, the other developers know have the most context and the um, most knowledge about it. Bernard, do okay, you want to, you have want to a, say something? I have a different proposal. Um, how about we just, uh, you know, vote no for the, the compensation request for the 200 BSQ that they would normally get this month if they're not running Collecti or not running the correct branch or latest version, et cetera. Yes, exactly. Why not? That is yeah, that I mean, why the DAO is in place yeah. and why we can, we can yeah. uh, do that and, and give them the... the the BISC or not. Maybe there should even be a role to audit the other seed node operators. Uh, I mean, and this could be done by the monitoring system. Uh, this sh maybe should be done by the monitoring system automatically, but I don't know if there's a current way to get the um, git hash of the commit that was used to compile the uh, BISC uh, binary or something like this that we could maybe try and retrieve over the monitoring system. But it, we should be able to uh, verify that they're running the correct version, the correct branch, um, and obviously we should get all this over the monitoring yeah. protocol. And if you don't, ver if you don't like qualify all these things, then you shouldn't get your compensation, right? Because you're not properly doing your job as the seed node yeah. operator. I mean, yeah, or maybe yeah. look to, to a Docker setup like uh, which, like you suggested, then that's basically everybody just using the provided Docker containers, and that's it. I'm I'm just I'm just on the on the uh, I'm about Jim thinking about getting idea, an idea how the how the BISC network looks like in in terms of which software versions are uh, are run and 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 uh, that would be uh, that the way to get uh, also uh, the, the 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 version of a seed node. So, uh, but we don't have that yeah. yet. Yeah, but I we, mean, with the version of the seed can, node, it's not. You but don't what, see we, the what, what we can do is is just vote uh, vote a, a compensation request down if the if the collectee, for example, is not there. That's a start. That's yeah. we I, can do yeah. it instantly. I, I think probably it's good to yeah to try to get this everything done like we want to have it, and then have a call with all the seed node operators uh, to make them clear what to do because I think at the moment it's just lack of communication and information. Uh, nothing else. But That's correct me if I'm wrong, activated. isn't this the seed node call right now and I'm the only seed node operator on the call? <laughs> yeah. yeah but, uh, I mean, we, we announced it very short term. Oh, and also, uh, Devin, he's in Canada and has his uh, yeah, day job, so he has only very limited uh, time slots, which is possible for him. And I think uh, it was not clear to the others. Uh, I think Stefan is not really following uh, Slack so closely. Or not the dev channels, only the, the seed node yeah. channel and so on. So I think but we ping them directly. I just joined, so I just joined and I'm also a, a seed node operator, so there are two people. I like Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but I think let's, uh, let's try to make it as a kind of like a priority for the next weeks. I don't know. Or, I mean, it needs to play together with all the documentation, what to do exactly with the setup, with maybe the, the Docker containers are already there and then have the point. I think at the moment, it's just important that nobody's running mast. Everybody has to run this branch. And I, I can send out the message to the three guys and, and that shouldn't be a big issue. But I think it's not, it's not their lack of motivation. So I think it's just the lack of information. And they, they like when these troubles have been a few weeks ago, they, they didn't really know what to do. And there was still the monitor not reliable enough that they can look up and see really what was going on. And, uh, but we need to get to the point that yeah, when there is a problem, the seed node operator has to check uh, if he can fix it. When not, he has to escalate further and that there, we are not losing a few weeks until it gets fixed because that's very dangerous. I suppose uh, one of the big issues was Collecti wasn't working with the uh, Java that BISC uses, right? I guess OpenGD, uh, I, JDK. I, I believe uh, with you, we have been the only one trying it and you, dis uh, you, you found it, so. <laughs> <laughs> but we will we will uh, see if we can uh, okay the progress gotcha. and so that we we have we can enforce it in the next weeks let's say um bernard you wanted to say something uh, a while back is this still is there still a need for uh in in regards to the collecti running open jdk 10 or 11 um uh, bernard raised his hand uh, a while ago oh. but uh, uh, Maybe he. 
Yeah, I wanted to suggest that we don't have to introduce any new like bonds. We just can reject the compensation requests. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so um, I believe we can we can close the 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 info part on the countermeasures that are in progress. Uh, and of course, I'm still working. Uh, the last point, I'm still working on on getting a, a, a online sync so that we eventually don't need the special branch for running a seed node anymore. And then we have some 20 minutes left, and I believe it's time to decide on a strategy. Uh, the draft strategy is, yeah, well, we, we have to use this special branch uh, until something else is available. Uh, and I believe we have to find the cause uh, for uh, the state hashes, the DAO state hashes to get out of sync. So for example, this on the, on the right, uh, top right here, why did this happen? There is, uh, uh, it has been out of sync for two and a half hours approximately, and we have to find the reason why this is happening. So uh, if something like this is happening, we have to discuss it, we have to view the logs, we have to find the issue. Uh, yes, Mike? Yeah, um, so I don't know if that was my issue from yesterday, but I resolved that by restarting the seed node. So if that's the five, no, no, it's about... So yeah, I had to just pick the uh, random one. Um, yeah, yeah, but so I had the same yesterday and I had to restart the seed node to resolve it. Uh, yeah, the the issue is if we if we do it on a on a on a broader scale, we can't always restart it, and we yeah, have sure, to find sure. the, we have to find the cause why it is going out of sync. Yeah, yeah. this one this one was yours, yes. Uh, right. So that that is this is basically we need it, and yeah. and what what uh, it, it happens mostly at least in the we we have the fourth uh, cycle now behind us, but it happened mostly uh, when uh, the voting cycle ended. So maybe we can we can find some, maybe there is something wrong with the code, simply wrong, there's a bug, I don't know. But we have to find uh, the cause why, why this is happening. Uh, do you guys have any other points we can, we can add to the strategy? Uh, we can agree on. Like Mike, are you running my branch or are you running master? I am running your branch, yes. Okay, and the restart should happen every day at least. I mean... Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's your branch from, I think, a week ago or, or two weeks ago when you said uh, you have to switch to my branch. Maybe maybe I best to update now or also to this new branch because there have been important fix uh, in the last uh, yeah a week ago with the latest release with the one fifteen and when it runs an older version then it wouldn't have this fix then it ah, uh, yeah so I have to check it it's a fairly a recent uh, as of date but uh, to a switch yes. to your branch or to the floor no, no, no. to to the new one to the official to the fisc uh, uh, to the new, Seed not temporary fix. Yeah. So everybody should fix uh, switch to this. That okay. Yeah, but uh, be, please right. don't do it all at the same time. Uh, but <laughs> 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 just just to see if it works. It should work. I've tested. I've started it up. But uh, let's take some caution here. <clears throat> okay, but so maybe I will do it uh, now, and then we'll see how that goes. Uh, Oh, yeah, great. when you have problems, uh, do it do it now because I think, yeah. uh, I mean, the seed notes from Stefan, I had still access and I updated them. They are working mm. fine. Um, so I'm not aware of any issues with his seed notes. Um, with, the, with the new branch? No, with the, it's not updated to the, to the new one, but was okay. updated okay. to my branch. Okay. So, and okay. it's basically the same code base. It's only the resource files are not yeah. up to date, but that's not relevant when you are already synced. Okay. Any other uh, uh, suggestions how we can uh, streamline the strategy on getting the seed nodes more stable? Obviously, Docker has got to be the best strategy uh, long term. If we can, uh, you know, solidify that Docker configuration to where people just need to 
uh, pull the latest uh, release tag and rebuild the container. And mm -hmm. also some automated test cases would be really good. I actually started working on that already. Uh, I was looking at your BISC monitor code, but I think we should maybe have um, some test cases so that after, like, like for me, the biggest question or the biggest unknown was, okay, I, I think I'm running the BISC seed node, but is it working okay? And I couldn't really, uh, there was no like black or white uh, pass or fail uh, test case to determine if my seed node is operating in the, you know, within the acceptable parameters. I know you have this um, really cool monitoring system for the production nodes, but maybe we could make a second monitoring system for, uh, you know, testing or development nodes, uh, you know, just to, maybe staging is the correct word. Um, when I was Agreed, staging yeah. my node before I put it in production, I had no clue. Um, you know, David and I were kind of uh, spinning up our own client nodes that were pointing to it, and he saw some issues in the logs, and I saw some issues in the logs, which we eventually uh, concluded was, um, you know, it's now been merged into that new seed node temporary fix. So I think that kind of, uh, those issues were resolved. But um, if we had some automated test cases, I think that would have, uh, you know, those test cases should have failed and said, there's zero, there's zero data being returned for this get blocks request or something, uh, you know, more binary like that. So mm -hmm. I think as, as part of the strategy, we should aim to move to Docker and we should aim to have some uh, test cases. Yeah, well, maybe I can say something about that. So, <clears throat> so I don't know if it has been discussed before, but I already also have a Docker installation and I have a, to a PR that I can uh, push to the seed node. So maybe if that's of interest, I can spend some time on doing that. So it's just my, my, my Docker configuration. It, it's not a lot of work to, to do it there. Yeah. So that's one part. And the other part is uh, Bernard did some integration testing for the API in which he spins up all the necessary Docker containers and does some integration tests. So maybe something similar could also be done for the seed nodes. Yes, uh, I believe the testing stuff is, 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 is a whole, whole uh, uh, dev call or multiple dev calls actually mm. by itself and uh, we should uh, yeah uh, I agree we should have uh, some green or red light if you have your seed node up and running and then you get yes is okay or no it doesn't work um, but uh, we are just starting in getting BISC tested so there is not really an infrastructure we can build on but uh, yeah. I added to this today. Uh, yeah. 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 So my suggestion was just to look at the work that Bernard did for uh, for the APIs. That that's one way of doing integration testing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one um, from the development side, I think there's one high preview, even more high preview, probably like this cross syncing, because when the seed nodes are running stable, we didn't have these issues in the past. Basically, it was most of the time it was running quite well. Uh, but now with the DAO, uh, yeah, I still see from my own app that quite often I don't get the BSQ blocks or when my computer is in sleep mode and I come back, then I don't have the latest blocks and I'm missing five blocks and it doesn't uh, catch up anymore, so I have to restart. So uh, the, the DAO code for requesting the BSQ blocks is not, yeah, that's missing some more resilient or uh, yeah, uh, uh, work need to be improved to be more resilient and more stable and care and and to um, and to deal with these edge cases like yeah when for whatever reason you lose connection so that you are catching up later when you have connection again and you not just have then this gap of blocks and you cannot use the DAO when when you're not up, uh, up to sync uh, and. It's a little bit difficult. I mean, it's not touching really anything deeper in the DAO. It's not about consensus or whatever. It's only basically about yeah, requesting the data and getting when you get the blocks, you're passing the blocks. But it has here already the complexity uh, that when you would receive multiple 
separate the sources from multiple seed nodes, you get the blocks. And you are starting the passing, you must not interrupt the passing and so on. So you need to manage it that only after the passing is done, you will check if you have a diff in the blocks that one seed node has maybe sent you more blocks and then you apply it again. So it has some complexities, not trivial, but it's also not so complex to, you don't need to understand the full DAO to do this. So when any developer, feels that you want to work on this, sir, I can assist uh, and can help a little bit. But yeah, maybe you can start by to... creating an issue. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. I with with, with some specifics on, on where is the problem, what is the goal and, and yeah, yeah. why the whole this. stuff is. Okay. I believe that uh, getting the monitoring up and running for every seed node, we can learn a lot. If we have a seed node that is going out of sync, for which reason ever, we don't know. And we can then cross-reference it with, uh, with uh, I don't know, CPU usage or uh, 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 Java heap usage or something like this. We can maybe pinpoint the, the issue much faster. So I, will, I would, uh, push the, the monitoring yeah. and collecting stuff. I couldn't agree with you more, honestly. Um, I'm kind of uh, surprised that we don't have any um, monitoring in place up until now because it's kind of like you're operating the seed nodes blind. Yes. I'll give you a good example. Um, I once was doing some consulting for a client and they didn't have a monitoring system and I implemented one and our, our monitoring system immediately noticed that they had 21 failed disks in their servers rate arrays, you know, there's probably a oh, hundred nice. servers. Yeah. And they did not even realize that all these servers were about to crash after they lost the second disc. So, um, not it's, it's actually a lot of cases, the monitoring system is not just a green or green light or a red light with some critical notifications. There's also a lot of yellow lights that's saying, Oh yeah, your disc is 90% full. You might want to, uh, increase the size of your disc before it gets to a hundred percent full and actually, uh, something crashes because of that. And so um, the monitoring system is is uh, like everything. That's, uh, I, you know, it's like trying to fly an airplane without having any of the uh, speedometer or, or any instrument to display. Fully agree. Okay, any other suggestions how we can improve? Uh, uh, just another um, um, so remark on collect on collecty so, so not liking open k 10 I am running my seed notes since forever I think on 11 so uh, so 11 should be fine uh. I believe uh, Christoph Storm did some some work on the code base and he's at least he says that uh, BISC runs on JDK 11 without any issues. He, uh, he, he didn't observe any issues. So maybe yeah. my monitor is running on JDK 11 as well and it's the BISC code, so. Yeah. Okay, so for my server, I'm running BISC on open JDK 10 and I'm running CollectD on open JDK 11. And the way I configured it was, I'm not using Docker currently, but um, OS is uh, actually Ubuntu does not support open JDK 10. I understand it's actually past the yeah. end of life. So um, I just did the OS official package installer for open G JDK 11, set that to the default. And then in my system D script to start BISC, I'm just setting Java home to uh, open JDK 10 and that works uh, very nicely. Uh, as we have, I mean, the main reason why we have not go, uh, went up uh, is because uh, Oracle has not provided a Java package, which is required for the binary <coughs> for uh, GDK 11. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's now there, but that was at least in the past the reason why we couldn't update. And um, OpenGDK doesn't have any Java package, it's only Oracle. So we are depending on this uh, until we have not another build. Uh, Way yeah, for, for, for building. Yeah, for building the binary. Not for I think it, uh, yeah, but uh, when you're building it, you are sh we are shipping the JDK with the binary. So I think it's a little bit risky when we developers are basically using JDK 11 and we are shipping a version with JDK 10 because there might be some small whatever yeah. issues but and we will never... 
difficult I, to cover it. But uh, can't we force JDK 11 or 12 to make uh, JDK 10 compatible? I don't. I don't know. Uh, I have not looked into this, but I mean, by default. Yes, you can. Uh, but yes, you can. <laughs> okay, Theoretically, Java, you mean that in the Java package you are shipping JDK 11 with uh, JDK 10 Java package? Uh, I, I believe the, the, the stuff was to, to compile it for uh, uh, for Java 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we, but we that's used still... The, uh, we used so, the, and then, so, and then only to release, also a manager has to actually have a JDK 10, and the yeah. developers can use 11 or 12, yeah. but just to make it source compatible with the 10. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's still a difference, I think. Uh, I, I mean, probably it doesn't break anything, but it's not the same. Uh, and I would be a little bit careful with this as long as not the absolutely must reason. And yeah, when it's only uh, needed for some 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 things like their collect or so, yeah, maybe we can find a compromise here, but that we are just moving to, uh, yeah, that developers are using JDK 11 or so, even with compiling back to JDK 10, it's a different setup basically like what we are shipping. And I think that's in, potentially in dangerous. My uh, experience, we, we had uh, back at the university, we, we had the issue that you, you can you can uh, compile for a JDK smaller than the, uh, older than the, the current one, but it's not the same. We we uh, I worked in the in the crypto uh, part of, of things, and it made a difference. It made a huge difference. Uh, so, uh, it it would not uh, maybe it's it's no issue at all for a hello world application, but I wouldn't risk it for such a uh, yeah. Uh, I was just about to say that something similar. If you're running um, an unsupported or untested, maybe is the accurate term, or if you want to be um, brutally honest, you're testing Open JDK 11 in production on your uh, seed node, and while that might work perfectly fine, I think we should test it on a uh, a staging uh, setup and with get like the full monitoring, um, run the full suite of test cases before we run any seed nodes in production on uh, these open JDK 11, just on the off chance that, like you said, the cryptography or, or some uh, performance timing differences, it could be a very subtle, like threading, uh, who knows what, but um, we should probably have all the seed nodes running the same, or Java, the same dependencies, the same everything as much as possible to yeah. avoid the DAO state. Because, uh, you know, as earlier in this call, we were just educated how critical it is to not uh, to prevent the DAO state from getting out of sync. And the Java mismatch could theoretically uh, cause something like that. We got to be really careful. Yeah. Agreed. And, um, Unfortunately, yeah, Oracle fucked up completely the new policy with the versions. So I really have to complain a little bit about this because we lost probably half a year of developer work with all these issues when we updated from JDK 8 up to 10 at the end. And it was just a pain in the ass in all areas uh, because it was, I mean, they, they deployed it as a kind of like production ready version, which has a super short uh, lifetime. And at the end, it's a, it's a nightly, yeah, it's, a, it's a beta test or alpha test. And what they're doing now that they're shipping uh, JDK 12 already as kind of like, yeah, that's not a long-term version and they don't have the tools ready. Like the Java package is from my opinion, completely unprofessional what they're doing. I mean, we couldn't, uh, we should get to the next uh, long, uh, long-term long version, which is Ch JDK 12, I think. But that will take probably another year until they have shipped the, the package or we have find another solution for this. And what, yeah. They forced us basically to live with a beta version and now they are declaring it dead already. It's just a pain in the ass and with GDK 11 it's not much better, not, not much worse. And as I said, yeah, when we did this update we didn't see all the troubles in the beginning of course otherwise we would never have done it. But yeah, you're starting and then you cannot go back because you have already worked a lot on changes and then you think, yeah, here's a problem, we can fix this and here's a new problem, we fix it. So we're uh, moving too much in the next uh, yeah, in the next trouble with JDK 11, I would be very cautious. I mean, it doesn't provide us any anything important. There's no feature what we need or whatever. And well, the security updates are the the primary concern of using a yeah. uh, open and that's no longer that's past its end of life, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course, I mean, uh, would be the best, but 
who we knows how many security holes in, in the new version, how many backdoors. I mean, Oracle is an American company, so expect, expect <laughs> what do you expect from American companies. So I'm actually Fair more, more uh, I would like to use software which is older than five or 10 years, because in this time, there was probably less backdoors like in today's software. Yeah, of course. Uh, back then, everything was better, except for the future. The future is not better. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, there was probably more security holes, but probably less vectors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So we have about two minutes left. I believe we can wrap the, the discussion up. Uh, I will uh, compile some, some um, meeting minutes and uh, compile some uh, next steps, what we, we agreed on. And uh, the whole talk is... Uh, if if I don't fuck it up, I have uh, recorded the talk, and I will, uh, I believe, uh, work with Steve to get it on to YouTube. And well, thanks all for joining. And I believe, yeah, we can end it now. Except there is something really important. Someone of you would like to to note on. Uh, just a quick question: When it's roughly planned the next call? Because I think there. The thing with the new developers, how we are reaching out to new developers and how we are dealing now with the quite a few new developers is somehow we shouldn't wait one or two weeks. Uh, I think that should either we have a follow up in the next days or we are maybe doing now or maybe somebody who has still time just uh, stay and, and we are talking a little bit about this. Um, uh, yes, uh, so the, 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 uh, we, we agreed uh, yesterday day before yesterday, I don't know. We agreed on, on doing it on a short term and, and we tried it today, uh, only announcing it two days before. Uh, and we have a list of topics, so there is no, no reason why we should wait two weeks. So I believe um, I'm, I'm available again uh, on the weekend. So maybe Saturday, Sunday, Monday, something like this will be, I, I will schedule the next, next uh, dev course. So I believe we are green. Yep, fine with me. Okay, so thanks for joining, guys. Uh, happy coding, and let's make some progress and not just talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.